Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup. We have a spicy week for you. It is so spicy. We're going to start with the weirdness happening over at Makeup Revolution. I wish I could be a fly on the wall to know what is happening over there. I can't wait to hear your take on it. Then we'll talk about the sad news out of Minnesota. A woman was poisoned by her face cream, poisoned so badly that she now has permanent partial blindness, and it also affected her children. I'll tell you why. It is a crazy story and something you need to be aware of. And then when we get into the sales section, you know what I'm going to talk about because you know we called it here on What's Been Makeup. People are pissed at Sephora again. But we're going to talk about it. Hang tight. We're getting into it right now. Before we do get into it though, we do need to take just a moment to thank this week's sponsor. Well, hello. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today's episode of What's Been Makeup is sponsored by Blue Land. One thing we talk about in What's Been Makeup all the time is greenwashing and how some companies decide that say, hey, we're eco-friendly. We'll help you help the environment. But it's all crap because all you're doing is you're filling a plastic bottle with a refillable plastic bottle or something else of that nature that makes absolutely no sense. And the other thing we've talked about is that the way that we are moving as far as really being eco-friendly and helpful to our environment is refills and that is what Blue Land specializes in. Blue Land is cradle to cradle certified which is the global standard for products that are safe, circular, and responsibly made. Another thing that's great about Blue Land is it isn't very expensive. The tablets run you about $2.25 per tablet but you can save more by buying things in bulk or getting a subscription. I personally have the Clean Essentials kit. And in that kit, you get a bathroom cleaner, a glass cleaner, a hand soap, and my favorite, the all-purpose cleaner. This cleaner is freaking fabulous. It is the best cleaner that I have used to actually break up what is on my countertops so that I don't have to sit there and scrub and scrub and scrub to get everything off. This stuff is freaking phenomenal. When you buy products in the store, of course, most of them are mostly water. But with Blue Land, all you're paying for is the actual cleanser. Here is what the tablet looks like fresh out of the pack and it's very easy to do. All you do is fill your forever bottle with warm water, you drop in the tablet, you let it dissolve, you put the little sprayer nozzle on or the pump on and your cleaner is ready to go. You don't need to shake it, you don't need to stir it, you don't need to do anything, you just use your cleaner right then. If you're looking for something other than the products that I mentioned, they also have laundry products, they have body washes and they also have dish detergent. Blue Land is currently having their biggest sale of the year. It is 20% off your entire order. So this is a great time to stock up. Or if you're trying to cut down on your plastic waste, this is a time to do it or to gift it to someone that you know will appreciate it. There is a link for you down in the description box and the sale does end on December 15th. Thank you again so, so much to Blue Lamb for sponsoring this video. But now my friend, it is time for What's Up In Makeup. Weird stuff is happening over at Revolution Beauty. Uh, we've been following this saga for quite a while. Back in August, Revolution Beauty started going under audit because of some weird stuff happening financially with them. They like couldn't report their finances because something shady was going on, so they just didn't report it. So following that, they got pulled from the UK Stock Exchange in September. And then Adam Minto and another guy that worked there that I forgot his name... I'll put it on the screen. They ended up saying that they were temporarily stepping down from their positions. And then a couple weeks ago, Adam Minto just left completely. And now we have a company that is investing a lot of money into Revolution Beauty. It's like such weird timing. So there's something going on here. And who the company is might explain it. It is a company called Boohoo. They are a fast fashion company out of the UK. And you know, Revolution Beauty is based in the UK as well. For some perspective, Boohoo did own some part of Revolution Beauty back a while ago. They owned about 3%. And in the past three months, they made it 12.9%. And now they just doubled that, about doubled it to 26.5%, which makes them the largest shareholder. They also have a new CEO that's replacing Adam Minto, who had founded the company back in 2014. This guy's name is Bob 
Bob Holt. He's been serving as the interim COO since October 14th of this year. Not being in the UK and never having shopped at Boohoo, I don't know much about the company other than it's a fast fashion brand. And you know that Revolution Beauty is kind of the fast fashion of the makeup space. So I'm curious to know if you live in the UK or even if you just have predictions, why you think Boohoo is putting such an investment into Revolution. I personally think that they see the value in the company in that they do have an international audience. They probably want to sell it at their website. I don't know if there's physical stores, but on their website, be able to sell Revolution stuff on there. They get all kinds of collabs. They did Game of Thrones. They've done Shrek. They do all these things. They have all these connections and Boohoo wants those connections. I feel like then maybe they might be able to do like branded things for their clothing line, stuff like that. So I do think there might be some logic behind investing so much in this company that is essentially going through it right now financially. Uh, but we will see. We will see what happens and we'll see whether this affects even more the quality of the products. And like we've talked about before, Revolution Beauty now owns BH Cosmetics. So if you're a BH Cosmetics fan, this affects them as well. But as always, because you were a viewer of What's Up in Makeup, you are going to be in the know. I will keep you posted. We talk a lot on this channel about clean beauty and how that marketing strategy is just complete crap because it is not regulated because anybody can call anything clean. And when you see those clean at Sephora list, clean wherever, clean beauty stuff, they're just putting stuff on there that's been demonized. Things like petrolatum, which is a fantastic occlusive. It's a great ingredient to lock water into the skin, but it's demonized because the unrefined version is petrol and that freaks people out so therefore they people just dismiss it all together but I also think it's important besides talking about the bunk of clean beauty and that things can be more safe than what they demonize them to be it's also important to note when ingredients are legit actually really dangerous and that's what happened in Minnesota there was a woman who bought a skin cream from outside of the U.S. and she was experiencing Experiencing all these symptoms and what really pushed it over for her is that she was experiencing a loss of vision and it turns out this loss of vision is permanent. She has now permanent partial blindness because of extended mercury exposure that was in this face cream that she was using for skin whitening purposes. Now mercury is banned or restricted in most countries including the U.S. but that doesn't mean that companies can't sneak it in there because as you know the U.S. does not test cosmetics before they go on the market. So we do know that mercury is a melanin inhibitor. So theoretically, a company could add mercury to their product in a lower or higher level if it's advertised as a skin whitening product in order to increase the effects without telling the customer. They could put it in there and then not even put it on the ingredient list. And that's what's happening with a lot of these products. Some of these products are sold on eBay or Amazon, and it's just not listed on the ingredient list. And what's so scary about this particular story is that the woman was not only affected herself, but they found the mercury all over her freaking house. They found it in her washing machine. They found it on her towels. They found it in her children's bedroom. Her children were tested for mercury and they had much lower levels than she did of mercury, but they did have elevated levels of mercury in their blood. So it is really, really, really important that you are very careful if you're buying a skin whitening product that is from a reputable company. There are ingredients that can help with that, including AHAs like glycolic acid, niacinamide can help with evening of the skin tone. Hydroquinone is another ingredient, but definitely should be used with the observation of a doctor because it needs to be used in a very specific way at a very specific concentration. But definitely be careful if you are interested in skin lightening products that you do not get them from some market it somewhere or go somewhere to a beauty supply shop and not know where the cream came from. Just be very, very careful out there because it can cause permanent damage. The toxicologist in Minnesota said that some people could have mercury poisoning for years and not even see any effects because it is such a low level. You may not see any serious problems for a while or not realize that it's related to the face cream that you're using. So just please, please, please be careful out there. You've probably heard of the pink tax, right? 
Have you heard of the baby tax? <laughs> I had never heard of that. It's sometimes called the kid tax. That is a thing, and it is something that Neutrogena is now dealing with because a class action lawsuit has been brought against them for their stick sunscreens because apparently there's two different sunscreen sticks that they're selling. One is marketed to babies, and one is marketed to adults. And according to the lawsuit, the ingredient list is nearly identical. The only difference between the two is that the baby one has colloidal oatmeal in it and the adult one has vitamin E in it. That's it. Other than that, the ingredient list is the same. Now, the colloidal oatmeal is like 13th, I think they said, on the list of ingredients. So I don't know how much you need of colloidal oatmeal to really do anything. I know that some skin influencers that I watch love that ingredient. It's supposed to be really great for the skin barrier, for irritated skin, which would be great for babies. But what they're saying in the lawsuit is that the difference between the two products isn't worth the markup. The two products are the Neutrogena Pure and Free Baby Zinc Oxide SPF 50 Sunscreen Stick, which runs $16.96, and then the Mineral Ultra Sheer Dry Touch Face and Body Stick, that's $8.65, which is about a 50% markup just for that word baby and the 13th ingredient being colloidal oatmeal. <laughs> that's it. That's all that's different, and that's the issue that people have with it. The lawsuit is looking to represent people in specific states, New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, or Rhode Island. If you have purchased the baby version and you bought it because you thought it was better than the adult version, definitely check out the link down below and you can probably join this class action lawsuit. These are not the first companies to do this, but I like to mention it when it does pop up. There are a lot of companies that are currently raising their prices by just a little bit. And right now it is the Inky List and Auric Cosmetics. Let's start with the Inky List. So they did put up an Instagram post. I'll put it up on the screen for you so you can check it out. Mark Curry, he's the co-founder of the Inky List. He did a short Instagram video about why they're doing this. They're raising their prices either $1 or $2 per product, but not all products are going to be affected. Of course, they are citing hyperinflation, global supply chain, energy prices, things like that. And he says that it's very important to be transparent parent about that and he says that it's important to maintain the effectiveness of the products to raise the prices just a little bit we're hearing the same thing from Oric Cosmetics that is owned by Samantha Ravindal uh, they're raising their prices between a dollar and a dollar fifty per product both brands are upping their prices on January 1st of 2023 so if you were interested in buying something at their current price you might want to jump in on that now I am always so curious to find out what the Pantone color of the year is going to be because they always, even though it's a color, they always try to tie it into something that's happening in current events, things that are happening in public discourse. Like for example, in 2021, they had two different colors. They had like this bright yellow and then this like, but like boring kind of like cement wall gray. And they said that it was meant to symbolize strength and hope amid global unrest due to COVID. COVID-19. They said it was a conjoining of deeper feelings of thoughtfulness with the optimistic promise of a sunshine-filled day. That was what they said back in 2021. In 2022, they created their first digitally created shade. It was called Very Perry, and it was to, quote, help us embrace this altered landscape of possibilities, opening us up to a new vision as we rewrite our lives. And those are the days of our lives. I think it was supposed to symbolize kind of moving away from pandemic restrictions. And now it will bring you Pantone's color of the year for 2023. Here we go, drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. It is called Viva Magenta. They say it's all about the evolution of technology and an unconventional shade for an unconventional time, a new vision. Okay. They say, quote, tapping into the experimental spirit of Viva Magenta, Pantone explores the dynamic between artificial intelligence and human creativity to create the Magentaverse. And I have a feeling that this was created before the crypto crash, before Facebook started losing a bunch of stock because the metaverse wasn't doing so hot. I, and this was definitely not created with foresight. That they, they just do a, do a way of knowing what happened this past couple of months as far as the whole, you know, digital 
everything kind of collapsing. So I wonder if they regret that. I mean, they could have put a different spin on it. They just released this. They could have just made something else. <laughs> but I guess they're sticking to it. That's okay. So when you see things in magenta in 2023, you can blame Pantone. <laughs> All right, my friend, let us get into the product report. I took the last week off to spend Thanksgiving here in the U.S. with my family. So this is two weeks worth of products. Uh, not a ton. I didn't miss a whole lot. Sometimes I have to break it into two pieces because there's so many products. Not so much this week, but we do have some interesting launches that I do want to talk about that I'm excited for. So this is the Glam Light and Strawberry Shortcake collection. And I'm so glad they did the classic Strawberry Shortcake. Color Story is exactly what you would expect from Strawberry Shortcake. It is not my jam, no pun intended, but it matches and it's what it should be for this collection. The whole collection is $78. There is a $3 discount versus buying everything individually. Individual products do range from $12 for the lashes to $32 for the eyeshadow palette. It is a very cute collection. It's adorable. I know that some people will love this just as it is, will use it just as it is, but I can also see people buying this just because, you know, it brings back the memories of strawberry scented plastic. This next one I have on my eyes today and we'll talk about it in PR Purchase Product of the Week. This is the Laura Lee Los Angeles Whimsical Nudes Collection. Palette is $36. The brush bundle is $55, or you can get individual brushes. Those are $5 to $12, or you can get a bundle of the palette with the brushes. That's $71, and I do have it here in my hot little hands, and I used a couple of the brushes too, but I will tell you more about this in just a couple of minutes. Here's another collection for you from Trixie Cosmetics. It is the Sweet Treats Collection. Three four-pan palettes with three matching lip oils in sugar, ginger, bread and jelly filled. The PR box is out of stock like Trixie Cosmetics does. Usually the PR boxes sell out pretty quickly, but it does look like all of the individual products were available when I went to go film. $12 for the lip oil, $16 for each individual palette. There's also a six piece candy themed face and eye brush set. That'll run you 35 bucks. Mel Cosmetics has decided to delve into the brow area. So let's talk about the three different products that they launched for your brows. We're starting with the Perfectionist Brow Ultra Fine Pen. It is $24. It's only in one shade, which is called Universal Brown. And you use this to draw specifically hair-like strokes on your brows. I am not a fan of products like this, but I know some people that absolutely love them. They've also released the Max Hold Brow Gel. That is $25. The wand on this looks super freaking cool. I've never seen anything quite like that. That's really neat. They also released the Perfectionist Brow pencil, $22. That's six shades available. You can also get a bundle of all three products where you get to pick your brow pencil shade. That's $50 for the collection of three. Moving over to Sephora and Ulta. Not a ton happening this week. I, we got that huge, huge push in October, beginning of November, and now it's like nice and chill. So let's talk about what did launch. We have the Fashion Fair Luxe Highlighter Duos. There's two different colorways available, $39 each. They say it is a transformative high gloss hybrid highlighter with a silky skin hugging texture and rich lasting color with pure pearl impact. It does say in the description that it is a cream formula, but when you look at the picture, it looks like a powder. It's very weird because if you look at their blush formula, their swatches look like it's cream. So I'm a little bit confused because I guess it's a, it's a high gloss hybrid highlighter, but it doesn't look glossy at all, right? Am I seeing, am I seeing that right? It looks weird. I don't know. I'm curious. If you buy this, let me know. You have to come back and let me know. Beautiful packaging here from Grande. Nice to see them doing something a little more interesting with their packaging. We have the Grande Brow Tinted Brow Gel and Grande Brow Enhancing Serum. It's a two-in-one kind of product. $38. You do have four shade choices there. Love that it has a little teeny tiny wand. I think that's very, very important for a tinted brow gel. But along with that, along with the tinted brow gel, you also get their serum in there that is supposed to help with hair growth. They say you will get thicker, darker, or more natural looking brows in as little as six to eight weeks. So there you go. And then one more thing over at Sephora, the Fenty Skin Plush put in the Intensive Recovery Lip Mask with Pomegranate Sterols and Vitamin E. It is $22. As of the time I'm filming, it did say that it was a Sephora app exclusive. Not sure if that's changed as of today, but it does say it, quote, coats lips with supercharged moisture for a smoother, firmer, and plumper looking pout in one week. And 
I love the packaging on this. It's so cute. It reminds me of like the drunk elephant po proteiny polypeptide cream where you push it down and then the cream comes out. Instead, you crank it up and then the little, the gooey stuff comes out. And then you have like all that space on the top to like get it on your finger to like put it on your lips or whatever. I think it's cool. I think that looks really nice. I hope that it's fabulous. And then moving over to Ulta, I have another thing to show you. I got this in PR as well. This is the ColourPop It's a Small World collection. I am wearing a little bit of that too that I'll talk to you about. In the collection is a palette, three pressed powder blushes, the Fresh Kiss Glossy Lip Stain Vault, and two Tie-Dye Super Shock Highlighters. The full collection is $114. Individual products from $11 for the highlighters, all the way up to $28 for the lip vault. The other collab from Ulta that's new this week is the NYX and Avatar Way of Water collection. But what's weird over there is it does say, at least again, as of the time I'm filming, that it is a platinum exclusive perk that you could get this. But I would imagine it'll open up to everybody else pretty soon. The article that I read that's going to be linked down below does say it is going to be available but also so they're probably just giving first access to people that are platinum but here's what it is they say that the makeup line was inspired by the characters in the film and the vibrant bioluminescent hues throughout the land and sea in the world of pandora it includes palettes highlighters lipsticks glosses a blue face paint in case you want to be blue I guess, and a setting spray infused with, with marine ingredients, which I think is pretty smart marketing. Full collection is $120. Individual prices range from $9 for the lip gloss to $40 for the palette. They're also having a promotional event for the collection. If you take pictures of products or of you wearing the makeup on social media, they want you to post and NYX will donate $1 up to $50,000 to the Nature Conservancy and its efforts to protect the oceans, animals, and habitats. It runs from now until February 28th of 2023. The post must use the hashtags that are on the screen now. The film will launch in theaters on December 16th. It's a gorgeous collection. It's absolutely beautiful. I never know what to think about NYX. I never know whether it's going to be the good formula or the crap formula. <laughs> you don't know. So I'm hoping that Avatar fans will tell us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy it maybe for the avatar and then hopefully it's good quality for you. We'll just have to wait and see. And then the last thing in the product report we have this week is from L'Oreal. They came out with some new primers. They are called the Prime Lab primers. There's four different styles available. $16.99 each, which seems really expensive for a drugstore primer. Oh my gosh. There's the Redness Eraser, the Matte Setter, the Pore Minimizer, and the Dullness Reducer. All of them claim to last for 24 hours. Holy moly, maybe that's why they're so dang expensive. All right, let's talk PR Purchase Product of the Week because I'm very excited to show these to you. So let's start off with the Laura Lee Whimsical Nudes Palette. It is so, so pretty. I think Laura knocked this color story out of the park. I love the addition of the green there. And one thing that's cool is that this brown here actually has some green in it when you apply it. So it really makes it a little bit different. Let me go ahead and swatch these for you so you can see. One moment, please. All right, here we go. Let's see if you can see the goodness. So do you see how the brown does have some green in it? It's like a deep olive green. It's really cool. So you've got that mix of like peachy tones and the greens. And it's just a really nice color story. I like that there's a nice range from light to deep. The shimmers are shimmery. The foils are foily. The mattes are matty. <laughs> and I feel like we don't see peach paired with green as much as some other color stories. And Laura's formula really is very nice. I am wearing it like I said on my eyes today. So I use these three foildy guys on my upper lid and then I use the green on my lower lid. And then for my crease, I just use this shade and this shade here. And I also use the shade for my eyeliner as well. And everything applied beautifully. It applied like I would expect a Laura Lee Los Angeles palette to apply. For my cheeks today, I used from the Small World Collection from ColourPop. I used this one as my blush. This is in the shade Happiest Cruise. And then my highlighter today is one of the super, super shock highlighters in Jubilant 
Ju jubilant chorus, jubilant chorus. <laughs> and it is right there. And then on my lips, this is my first time ever using one of these Fresh Kiss lip stains. And I like it. I thought it was really pretty going on to the lips. But one thing that's weird about this is that there's just random glitter just like hanging out in it. And it's like, it doesn't look right. Like, because occasionally you just get like this little speck of glitter. I don't know if any of it actually came off on my wrist there. But occasionally you get like a random speck of glitter that just ends up looking weird but you can see the opacity there it's it's not an opaque thing it's a lip tint it's it's neat it's a really neat formula and as far as lasting power I've only used it today but I did find that it wore down relatively quickly in the middle of my lips and I did need to reapply it as I was finishing up the script so it doesn't seem to be as stainy as some other lip stains but again this is kind of a first impression so I don't want to hold this to it a hundred percent I also did want to mention for those of you that were wondering I did get the Muppets collection in PR and I freaking love it. I am loving the eyeshadow palette. Let me get it for you. I'm keeping it right here because I am just, I love it. I love it so much. I'm having so much fun with it. It's just a different kind of color story and the shades in here are really fun to play with. I'm also really enjoying the Miss Piggy products that are here. This one is the Glitterly Obsessed in uh, the shade It's Moi and then the Miss Piggy uh, Super Shock Shadow. This one is in the shade Holiday Hostess and really had fun creating a look with these two the other day and I love it. I'm so thankful and I'm really enjoying it and it's performing great and it makes me happy because sometimes I look at an eyeshadow palette and I go yes that's so me I love it so much and then I get it and it's like a wah, wah, wah. so very happy to report very much loving that eyeshadow palette notable sales this week oh I got tagged in this so many times yes Sephora is having a 20% off sale right now and yes we did just spend all of our money as VIBs and beauty insiders at 10% off 15% off only to a few weeks later have been able to get 20% off but you didn't know it was coming so it was like you didn't know what you wanted to do but I tried I, I told you it happened last year every opportunity that I got so you could make a choice for you whether you wanted to get your 10 or 15 percent or if you wanted to take the chance at getting 20 percent and I know some Rouge members are mad because it's like that's why they want to get up to Rouge because it's like it gives them that extra percentage off I mean if you think about it in the grand scheme of things I feel like Rouge is kind of stupid anyway the whole the whole thing is stupid you don't really get a lot of perks for how much you spend it's kind of a bonus so I mean personally I don't spend in order to get to a certain level anymore like I used to because it's just not it's not worth buying extra to get to that next level but yeah I know people are pissed about it and I I'm a little irritated too because I did buy my stuff at the 15% VIB point but you know it's it is what it is but just know it'll probably happen again next year <laughs> beyond that I did want to mention a couple of mystery boxes that are available because I think those are so fun. The Charlotte Tilbury mystery boxes are available. Seven full-size products for $125. That's 50% off. That makes them about $18 per product. And there is guaranteed to be a six-pan eyeshadow palette in there if you're interested in that. And then Melt Cosmetics is also having a mystery box bundle available for $75. The bundle, it says, includes, it doesn't say may include, it says includes gel liner, lip pencils, cream blush, brushes, liquid lipstick, contour, liquid highlight, and palette. It didn't say eye palette or face palette, it just says palette. But that seems like it would be a pretty good deal if it includes all of that stuff. And finally, our artist shout out of the week. Allow me to introduce you to Soph Builds Nails. I found her on Allure's website. They did a feature on her and I was like, what? And then I saw how many followers she had and I went, unacceptable. <laughs> So let me just show you her looks because they are out of control. Let's start with this one. These are, she just calls bathroom nails. Of course, it's the seafoam green is perfect. It's a perfect bathroom color, of course. And then of course the white tiles in the bottom. But honestly, for me, it's the attention to details like those little silver knobs on the sink and the tools on the shelf and the bath mat, the bath mat on the floor. It's so cool. And of course the little person, absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and move to the second one. This one's totally different. It is called Deconstructed Newton 
Queen's cradle. And I can't imagine the struggle that was happening to get this to actually work because it functions like a Newton's cradle. So cool. I mean, she says it's obviously not scientifically correct, but it still has the coolest effect with the chrome nails. Moving over to the third and final look that I'm going to highlight for you. This one is called Fancy a Swim. She is from the UK, so Fancy a Swim. <laughs> I love it. It is so cute. I cannot even stand it. As somebody that loved many things when I was little, still love many things, I cannot stand this. Like how? How? How do you even make water look this realistic how is that a thing and look at the texture the texture on the floor outside the pool and inside the pool so perfect the tiny little metal handles for like the little people to get out and of course the little teeny tiny swimmers they're amazing it's amazing it's so freaking cool there's so many things like this like I feel like she could open a museum like a museum of little tiny nail people <laughs> I would go I would pay to get in I would or at least a pop-up shop I would go if I was in New York City and that was there, I would be there. So instead, because it's not a thing, I'm just following her on Instagram. And I would recommend you definitely go check her out and follow her if you're interested in seeing these very cool nail looks. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you, as always, to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you for your submissions this week. And always, I appreciate you oh so very much. Our chat today is going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be hanging out, talking about makeup, talking about things happening in the industry live. So if you would like to join us, it's very easy to do. If you're subscribed, it's super easy. You just need to click on your subscription feed. It should be right there for you. But if you're not subscribed, you should also be able to find it by going to my channel page, clicking on my videos, and clicking on the link that says live chat. I know notifications haven't really been working very well on YouTube, so make sure that you know that chat is at 5 p.m. so you can come and hang out whether YouTube notifies you or not. <laughs> Thank you again so, so much for watching. If you would like to hang out just a little longer because you want more makeup news or another video in your life, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode, not last week, two weeks ago episode of What's Been Makeup, in case you missed it. But if you do need to go because you got stuff to do, it is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. 